Have you ever looked at an ancient obelisk and wondered, how on earth did people make, transport and lift a 300 ton piece of granite 3,500 years back without any machines? No iron cranes, no steel drills, no engines, just human hands and a kind of rock so hard it can wreck even the most modern tools. Yet the ancient Egyptians didn't build just one or two. Over 120 colossal obelisks were created by them that the very symmetry in the stonework is telling, and then most of them are polished to a mirror sheen and moved across deserts and rivers. Today, engineers struggle to explain how. However, they are not too far to find. In uxors, temples and writings, the clues are still preserved. So today, we're going deep into the quarries of Aswan, the epic journeys along the Nile, and there are the lost lifting methods that modern engineers call nearly impossible and that do not have a write-up yet. This, this is how the Egyptians came to build by hand the world's heaviest stone columns. Obelisks weren't just monuments, they were messages carved in stone. Each one represented a frozen sunbeam, a connection between Pharaoh and the gods, a symbol of divine power that would last forever. But here's the real shock. In this case, each obelisk was shaped out of the solid rose-red granite taken from the Aswan Quarry, one of the hardest stones on the earth. Modern cutters use diamond-tipped blades. Egyptians used dolerite pounding stones. Imagine smashing a rock for hours. Then one should reflect upon what it would be to spend months refining it until a 300-ton spike ascended from the earth. This is the dedication of ancient engineers. Engineers drew the obelisk outline directly on the granite bedrock. They calculated perfect taper, perfect symmetry, exact height, exact inscriptions. This is the crazy part. Obelisks are so accurate that contemporary laser measurements only recently within a few millimetres, were caught up. It is important to note how accurate these obelisks were. Current laser measurements can still barely measure within millimetres of an obelisk. Workers used dolerite hammer stones weighing 5 to 10 kilograms. They smashed thousands of times a day. Each hammer lasted only 20 to 30 minutes before breaking. The trenches for the obelisk were pounded until the block was left detached on three sides. How do you carve the bottom of a 300 ton stone? Archaeologists believe they used fire heating plus cold water cracking, inserted dry wooden wedges, let them expand and separate the stone, cleared the dust with copper chisels. This took months, sometimes years. More specifically, the unfinished obelisk of Aswan that weighs 1,200 tons has tool marks which demonstrate very precisely how it was carved. Okay, carving is one thing, but moving a 300 ton needle. Even today, cranes struggle with weights above 200 tons. Yet Egyptians transported obelisks 1,000 kilometers along the Nile. The practice of pouring water on dry sand to increase its strength among workers has been shown by physics experiments in 2014. This allowed sledges to slide with half the friction. It likely took 1,000 plus men, 100 plus ropes, constant coordination. Depictions show massive custom-built ships with twin hulls, central stone cradle, reinforced beams. These barges were engineering masterpieces on their own. Despite its highest flood, once the Nile was reached, the obelisk was floated to its temple destination. The hardest question in history, by what method did the hundred people raise a granite pillar weighing 300 tons from its side to its edge? Modern engineers propose three leading theories, still the most convincing. Dig a deep pit, build a sand ramp, pull the obelisk onto the ramp, slowly release sand, let gravity pull it into the vertical socket. Teams built a long earth ramp, giant wooden levers, rope pulley systems. This required 
hundreds of engineers, tons of timber, perfect timing. Rare theory, but fascinating. Raising the obelisk partly with water to reduce weight. Once raised, workers, finished stone with quartz sand, carved hieroglyphs, gold or electrum caps, pyramidians, were added, erected the obelisk in the name of a god or pharaoh. The result? A monument that would withstand earthquakes, floods, invaders, and the ravages of time. So, how the did ancient Egyptians actually construct obelisks? With perfect planning, immense manpower, mastery of stone, the science of stuff that does not slide against the other, water and physics, etc., and a sense that the monument should be forever. They did not simply construct obelisks, they built messages to eternity. And thousands of years later, we are still asking the same question, how did they do it? <laughs>